Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. My name is Fernando Herrera and today I'm here at Luna's Inc. in Las Vegas. Now, be sure to stick until the end because we have a used tire facility, a recycling used tire facility that you're going to be definitely don't want to miss. But I'm here with Norberto uh, and he's going to tell us and show us more on his facility. Thank you, Fernando. Yes, my name is Norberto. Pleasure to meet all of you guys down there. And so we've got Luna's construction cleanup that started back in 1988. This is our recycling facility. And yes, as Fernando said, we also do uh, recycling of tires and we'll be uh, going down there right after this little uh, tour. So thank you very much. All right, man, let's follow you. All right, let's do it. Okay, so this is the East Tire lot now. It's like, it was like a two minute drive. It was probably a less. Drive. Like, we're just, we're oh. just down the road. And once again, it's just, uh, we've got, like I said, at least 20 acres that we're utilizing within this, within this block. And uh, we got to keep the, the lots close to, to ourselves because when the cat's away, the mice play. <laughs> we have about, possibly about 150 uh, pla places that we go throughout the Las Vegas uh, throughout the, the week. And some, some of them are two times a week, some, some of them are three times a week, and some are just one times a week. Long story short, those tires get picked up on those routes and they get brought right here. Okay. And those tires get dropped off somewhere, somewhere in this area here. And my guy's job is to basically separate them in three categories, and actually four categories you know good better best and the last category is junk right and right. The, the junk will actually be taken to a facility that gets ground down turned into little either tire chips or or the tires will actually be used uh as they are um and go into a cement kiln uh tires are basically it's it's made out of fuel right it's made out of oil and a tire will will burn at 17,000 btu which means uh it burns just as hot as coal so it's a very cheap substitute instead of buying coal for these uh, cement kilns and they'll take tires and use them uh, to, to heat those kilns up. So they'll use so, a powder then in that case or are they using? You know, in, from my experience and from what I've noticed is uh, cement kilns will use uh, two ty the tires, they'll, they'll set tires in two different forms. In chip form, uh, which is probably gonna be like a two inches or one inch minus, okay. or they're going to, use uh, pole tires because that's oh. the way they're set up. It just, cement kiln was, de depending on how they're set up, will they'll let you know how they accept them. So they'll they just say, them. send us the entire tire or send us the chips and... Yeah. Oh. And this trailer right behind you here, uh, this trailer gets loaded with with those uh, waste tires that go to those, those uh, cement kilns. So yeah. then from here, they go to the cement, uh, oh, but are you loading tires? Are you currently chipping tires here or that's done somewhere else? No, just uh, we will do it here. However, it just depends on how the market is, right? So um, whatever makes more, more sense at that specific time. Right now, it doesn't make sense. Uh, it costs too much to, to chip a tire. So what we're, we chose to do is just take the tires whole right now. Okay, so yeah. got it, got it. Okay, so that's what's traveling over to the cement kilns. And yeah. And okay. And now this I, is this is this is called the chipper trailer. And I see you guys are removing the sidewalls and the treads. Uh, what's the? Are, is this how you're sending them to them, or? Oh, what's the process with this? No. So, and how about this? We'll we'll get there in just a moment. What I okay, want to okay. do is kind of give you guys the the one, two, three on how we get there, okay. and then um, at the end we'll end up with the trash, and I'll explain to you how how what happens with the waste. Okay. Perfect, man. Awesome. So as the tires come in, and today, once again, today's a Saturday, so today's just a catch-up day. Typically, uh, on the floor here, you'll, you'll see, you know, two or 300 tires on the floor that the guys have to go through. We'll have about four or five guys on the ground, and they're gonna start cooling the tires. Cooling meaning separating them um, good, better, and best, right? Uh, some folks will number them as like a one, two, three. Some will call it ABC. We use the number system, the one, two, threes, right? One's 95% or better, the twos are going to have about 70% tread or better, and then uh, everything else below that's going to be a, thir uh, a number three. And after after number three, well, it's just going to be junk, and those got to go. So right here, we're going to have one of, one of our guys here. He's using the sidewall cutting machine for the tires that didn't make it are great. He, it wasn't a number one, number two, nor three. So this is waste. Um, he got takes it. the machine, he'll probably go through about maybe four or 500 tires a day. And uh, this is the best way, the safe, safest way to do it. Um, I've seen guys cut their legs, or I've heard stories where they're cutting, you know, 
some other areas. Yeah. And you just gotta be very, very careful. It's not worth it. So you wanna, you wanna find the safest way and this is the safest and most efficient way to do things. Yeah. There's a sidewalk cutting machine. And so 90% of the sidewalls have a value. Somebody will use them. Uh, I got a gentleman out of California that needs these, needs these sidewall tires. They use them as weights uh, for their their tarps that they put over their their, uh, their farms. You know, and we have other machines that cut sidewalls for the for the uh, the big heavy heavy duty uh, semi truck tires as well. And those sidewalls have a home here in Las Vegas for the. Uh, the traffic cones, the barricades. Yeah, I've seen them. Yeah. yeah I've so seen them, yeah. we probably move around 1,500 of those uh, sidewalls every couple of weeks. How so. much do they cost, or how much do you sell them roughly? You know, it's, it's not a huge money maker, but where you're where you're you're you're, you're actually saving money, uh, hauling it hauling it to Got to it. the landfill or okay. hauling it to to uh, the cement kilns, right? It's okay. just a you got to figure out what's going to make sense for you. And so we'll sell them for about $1.50 a piece. Okay. Uh, so I want to show you the, the different qualities that, that we're able to pull out of the, the waste stream here of tires. So uh, we call these our number ones. As you can hear, see here, the, the tread that these tires have, we, is it's pretty significant it's at a minimum at a minimum we have a minimum of 7 30 seconds on these tires minimum and they'll go up from there and we make sure that the tire does have that freshness to it as well so no dry not right. uh, dry yeah dryness. no dry rot none of that type of exactly. stuff so and now every day i mean we're human beings every now and then we will make that mistake however um we always let our clients we'll, we'll give them a, a few extra just for that for that mix up and so we'll also pull out our different types of tires, like anything that's an AT, MT. I mean, take a look at this tire. I mean, if, <laughs> if, if that's not a number one, I don't know what is, right? That's nuts. Look man. how fresh that is. This is new, man. I don't know what happened. That's a beautiful tire. We don't know what happened, but it's here, okay? It's here. We, and it we, made want, it here. we want whatever happened to keep on happening because we want more of these right here, okay? <laughs> So as, as time goes on and, and we start collecting uh, so many tires, we start noticing that there's, uh, there's matching sets, there's matching pairs. And so that's what we start doing with all the different sizes. Now, because of where we're at, it does get a little dusty. So that's why you'll see some dust on here. But long story short, these, these are good looking tires. Look at this, look at this beautiful thing. Another one. I mean. Yeah. Watch out. Look at that beauty. Yeah, this is that's crazy, man. Huh? Recycling, man. Go green or go home, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. That's like trash is cash, my friend. That's a I mean, a DOT for a new tire. It still looks fresh, 2019. Yeah. I see you got some Toyos over there. Even that's a Toyo for sure. Look at that beauty over there. Yeah, that's that's insane, man. I know. You know, later we'll talk You're about lips, it. You're man. You're like, oh my God. No, no, later beautiful. we'll talk. I have this guy in Houston. He buys all the Toyos, Michelins, the casings, because he remolds them. He remolds them. Yeah. Check that out. Yeah. You know, like I said, it's just uh, one man's passion, one man's treasure. And you just got to figure out, be creative on, on what you're going to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, some... It, it, it really is amazing in regards to what we get here. It, it, yeah. it, it baffles the mind, like, what is it doing here? Um, how is it in the waste stream? Why, why did you throw it away? At the end of the day, I don't care. <laughs> You're in the, yeah. it, it, it makes it right here. So, uh, so once again, these are all of our ATs, our MTs, our LTs. Watch and out. Watch out. This stuff is all mixed. Our, our number, our number ones, our number twos. There'll be very, there'll be a, there might be a few number threes in here. We try to keep them out of here and just put in our number three pile. But we typically like to just have our number ones and twos of this type of tire together. Okay. Somebody forgot their glasses here, man. They forgot what, their glasses? <laughs> well, they better put them on because we, we don't want number threes over here. Just number ones and twos. Okay, so, so in here, um, we have it, we have it uh, caged in for one reason. It's, and it's not really because anyone's gonna jump in here and steal the stuff. It's not, it's just to keep it 
separated Separate. from the rest of the uh, the tires. So as time goes on, we see the pattern and we start seeing exactly what's coming in. And so we start making tears and then they start converting into their, their full force, their full set of four tires. Same tread, same brand, same everything. So, and we, we, we try to keep them to either like a number one or a number two. If it's a number three, we're more than likely gonna put it in the number three pile and not mess with it because we're not, we're not trying to sell. So pretty much you guys junk. will start identifying either from different loads, the similarities you will match. Is it all sets or are you also doing pairs here? These should, these should be only sets in here. Okay. Outside of here, there'll be, it'll be a pair and then it'll, once it becomes a set, they'll bring it in here. Got it, yep. got it, got it, okay. Wow, man, you guys still yeah. have a lot of inventory though. Yeah, you know, um, it, it comes and goes, it goes up and down, right? So sometimes, sometimes it'll look a little empty in here and then there'll be times where all of a sudden it's just, just jam packed in here, we don't know what to do, right? <laughs> we gotta give, give a huge discount to blow them out. This is our number three tires over here. Um, <clears throat> Sometimes, as you notice, the guy didn't have his glasses on. I mean, mistaken this number three. I'm just joking. No, this is going to be all the waste. The, the number three is going to be over here on this side. Now, for example, if I see a good tread tire here, what could be a reason this ended up in a, in a number three? Is there a specific like damage that you you'll guys... see right here? It's a sidewall damage. A lot of times, it's going to be sidewall damage. You'll see right there. It's, 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 oh, I see. Got it. Yeah, yeah they hit a curve. They hit a pothole. Something happened. Unrepairable, yeah. pretty much. Or sometimes a number. If a, a number a number three might look good, like maybe one side looks really good, but then all of a sudden the other side, it's uh, bad alignment bad li or exactly. overinflated or whatever. Yeah. Okay. All this stuff's over here because it's the the tire machine. It, it's harder for it to cut these type tires, so we have another machine that's a little bit beefier that'll cut uh, these in half. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we also cut the sidewalls off of our semi-truck tires, and these are the sidewalls for those semi-truck tires, and they're used in the, in the traffic in the traffic barricade industry. Wow, so these are semi-sidewalls. These are semi-truck wow. semi sidewalls, yeah. Okay. Very so nice. these are bundles of 35, I believe. Uh, you know, you gotta we'll charge about $1.50 per, per sidewall. And so uh, we find a home for it and, and uh, make it go away. You know, on a daily basis, we're probably picking up around 150, about 150 semi-truck tires per day. And so the first thing we have to do on the sidewall tires is, um, there's, there's another market, even though a, uh, a semi-truck tire will be bald, there's still a home for it because for sidewall, for uh, semi-truck tires, uh, there's a home where they can recap them. Yeah. And so the first thing we do, well, we will separate it into a one and a two. Just one and two. There is no number three on, on truck tires. A number three, we call that a casing. That is going to go to the uh, to the recap shops. That are going to they will buff the entire casing off of it down to the to the metal uh, cords. Very gently, it'll go through some X-ray machines. And once it's done, it's it's cleaned, it's uh, cured, and they put a nice uh, brand new recap uh, tread on top of it and go back out to the market. So. And that's for the number threes, the ones that oh, don't make it here? Or, or yeah, the, the tires that come here, once again, the, the number ones and twos, we put this to the side and uh, for resale. And the number threes, we call those casings. Okay. We'll send those off to the recap shops that are going to go ahead and do whatever they're going to do to, to, to recap it. So the semi almost, no matter how bad a tire might be, it could still be worst case scenario retread if the bead is still... Well, your worst case scenario is that it's damaged where it's not even repairable or, or it's, not, it's not usable, right? So that's going to be junk junk. Okay. But in regards to, in regards to uh, finding a home for even a bald tire, your recap shop will use that. Wow. Right. Okay. And so it seems like these just showed up. My guy's going to have to go through this, through this stuff uh, and start dec deciphering, well, what's the number one, what's the number two, and what is uh, a casing? And I mean, just kind of going through here. This tire here, it's got great tread. However, it's missing a little lug there. Uh, we'll call that a number two. Uh, somebody will use that all day, all night, specifically the, the truckers that are here in Las Vegas in the construction industry. And 
they'll jump for this tire in a heartbeat. And the reason being is because a tire, a tire like this is gonna cost them around five to $600 for that tire. They can pick it, pick it up here for 80 bucks. So, yeah. and it, it'll, it'll last them, depending on the driver, it could last them a year, it could last them two years, right? So, so looking at this tire over here, no one's gonna use this. This this really it, this one's pretty bad. So this is a number three. This will go to a recap shop. They'll buff all this off, and they'll put a brand new cap on it. And do you sell these uh, casings, or do you just like donate them and then they'll they'll take care of them? Oh no, I sell it. Okay. So <laughs> in in another way, so one, twos, and threes are casings, and in this case, it's it's business. Yeah. Uh, the nice thing is I have a great relationship with the guys that do the uh, the uh, the recaps. Southern and Tire so, Mart, or? Oh. They're one of them. Okay. Uh, there's a few of them here in Las Vegas, and, and so these recap shops, you can do a deal with them where I, where you can structure, you can structure it where, hey, get, uh, here's my casings, uh -huh. they'll give you a credit, and when you need tires, they'll give you the tires that you need, and it just, uh, you're using your, your credits. Trucks or for your trucks or for whatever. Okay. Absolutely, That's awesome, and man. so it's a phenomenal relationship that we have with these guys. All right, so, as you can see, I mean, we get we get every type of tire. It doesn't matter. It's a, they call these uh, OTR tires. These yeah. big, huge monster tires go on tractors. We could get those as well. And sometimes when they're, we'll we'll separate those in ones and twos, as well. Well, not really much ones. They're more like twos and threes. Let me, let's back up there, okay? Let's yeah, yeah, yeah. cut. So, anyways, uh, what we got, what we have back here is basically our heavy equipment tires. And as we go through them, a lot of them, a lot of them will be junk just because of the nature of, of the industry of what you do. You know, down there on a construction site, they'll hit a rock, they'll hit some rebar, it'll just blow up and it's no good anymore, right? And they're just too costly to fix. However, when you, you do find something that is that will air up, it's got some somewhat of tread, um, and believe it or not, these tires can get recapped as well. And there's a market for, the, for those. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy, man. So we, we separate all that type of stuff here and we'll probably use about 50% of the stuff for our own equipment. We've got about 120 pieces of equipment on construction sites. Uh, so we use a lot of it ourselves. Um, and of course the rest of it, we're selling it to other folks that, that uh, recognize that we have this here. We don't really market what we do in regards to selling this type of tires in Las Vegas because there's just not an abundant amount. Uh, there's we might add we might add two or three tires in here per week it's not a huge volume of these type of tires that, that make it here and if you accept these tires and you need to get rid of them what we've we've had to invest in is into a shear a shear is basically a big scissor that goes on a on a piece of equipment right behind you is an excavator and that excavator has that shear on it that shear will cut right through these tires like butter wow I see it. It'll open up and you got to just munch on those tires and you cut them in three or four different uh, sections right. and then you can get rid of them to either the landfill will take them at that point or you take them to other recyclers that will grind Recycling. them down. That, yeah. Sometimes the problem with these tires is the, the, the cords inside them are just too thick and it's very difficult and very aggressive on recycling equipment. So many times those folks will not take it, but okay. some will depending on what type of machinery they have to, to shred. And of course, then we have some of the uh, motorcycle off the road tires for your ATVs. And there's, there's a lot of them. They, uh, they show up. Here in Las Vegas, we have, a, we have a, a big rental business in regards to these side-by-sides um, out there in the, in the Las Vegas dunes. And they're, uh, these make these make it a lot to, to these these tires make it to them, okay. and it's a it's a great market for them because they got so many carts out there and they're nonstop every single day out there in the dunes and in the desert, and you know folks come to Las Vegas as a tourist and just want to have fun and they're kind of reckless yeah. and <laughs> have a good time. However. Uh, tires take a beating so if these guys can find a 
a much more economical source of Absolutely. tires, yeah. they're gonna do Why it. Why not? So they come here and they pick the size tires that they need. And All right. So yeah, semi, semi tires, uh, once they start pulling them out, uh, number ones and twos, make it over here. And we'll separate them here by size. You know, we get some of the weirdest sizes. However, <laughs> those are, uh, as, as, as awkward as it sounds, um, they always find a home. Somebody's always looking for these size tires. I mean, uh, for example, we got the 305, 70, R22.5. These are typically bus tires. Um, however, we found, I've started putting these tires on our trucks because they, they last at least five times longer than a regular tire. The sidewalls are extremely thick because they're made to hit the curb. Right. And when I put them on my trucks and go to construction sites, they're hitting curbs, they're hitting rocks, they're hitting everything. So they're made to, to be beat up. And instead, they work phenomenal for us on job sites. So uh, then we'll have the, the 17 and a half inch, the 19.5 inch tires, the low pros, the 24.5 tires. We have the old school um, 10, 10 20s with the inner tubes. I mean. Oh man, yeah. Yeah, it, it, this nice. is just. I see that. It's crazy, crazy tires, but there's a need for it. Somebody will need this tire. And so it'll sit here. It might sit here for, for a week. It might sit here for, for two months. But when somebody shows up and they need, they need that tire, and we have it here, um, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll pay for it immediately in a heartbeat because they need it. So as you can see, all size tires, Awesome. All different qualities. So, whatever you need, we got it. All right, Norberto, so right, show us around, back. man. Absolutely. So, as I said earlier, our company started back in 1988, uh, just doing construction cleanup, going up to construction sites, picking up the garbage, and hauling it straight to the landfill. In 1993, things changed here in Las Vegas, and we had to do something different. We had to start recycling because the landfill rates went through the roof 800%. They went up overnight. And so we're like, how are we gonna stay alive? What are we gonna do different? And recycling was the key. That was the source that kept us alive. And this is the result of that change in 1993. We opened up our own recycling facility. And how does this go? It goes like this. All trucks that come here to dump their debris, their waste with us, the recyclables with us, has to be weighed. It comes here on this scale here that's about 160 feet long. Trucks and trailers, like this one right behind you, They'll back up onto this tray, onto the scale, and we'll figure out how much it weighed in. They'll dump their load, and we'll be able to weigh what what exactly the uh, net weight was of that uh, material. So follow me, so I'll show you exactly where uh, what happens next when my guys bring the load of waste and dump it inside this warehouse. All the waste that we pick up around Las Vegas comes from construction sites, demolition sites, and even people's homes. As you see right behind us. One of the divisions that we have is a dumpster, a dumpster division where we rent dumpsters throughout Las Vegas. And, you know, these dumpsters are being used uh, throughout Las Vegas for someone's doing a remodeling or someone's cleaning up their backyard, their, their garage, or, or cleaning out a warehouse. What well, doesn't matter. They use it to get rid of their waste, and we bring all that waste back here to our recycling facility. Now, Norberto, part of those dumpsters also are tires, right? Or you guys Absolutely. don't do that anymore? No, we do. And so uh, that's another story that I'll get to in regards to how the tire, the whole entire thing, the tire thing started back in 2009. 2009, a gentleman approached me and said, hey, Norberto, um, I want you to buy my recycling facility. I was like, okay, well, I'm not in that business, but t talk to me more about it. Well, I really can't because it doesn't exist yet. I just want to build it. I was like, hang on a minute. You're trying to sell me something that doesn't exist. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not in. I'm interested, but I'm not in, man. I need to know more about this. So um, the, the gentleman, as he as time went on and he progressed with his project and he built this huge, magnificent, he thought it was going to cost him $3 million. By the time he was done, his facility cost him $7 million. Um, so he was a little bit over budget. And yeah. uh, he comes to me and says, Norberto, it's all built. It's all built. Um, I need your help. I need tires. And I'm like, well, I'm not in the picking up tire business. I don't pick up waste tires. And he goes, well, can you do it? And I said, absolutely I can. I got the equipment, I got the trucks, I got the dumpsters, I got the people. At that time, we had about 300 employees back in those days. And we have a, a lot of, uh, we have a lot of, repu a, a great reputation here in Las Vegas. 
And so uh, it wasn't too hard to start making phone calls and starting to pick up those, uh, those waste tires around Las Vegas. And so we started bringing tires to, the gentleman's name is Jason, who opened up this uh, tire recycling facility back in those days. And Jason asked me for tires and I, we started bringing tires in. When we started bringing in so many tires, he, started, he, he told me, Roberto, stop, this is too many tires. And I told Jason, Jason, you asked me to open up the faucet. I can't just close it. Yeah. That, I'm gonna have egg all over my face. We're not gonna stop. We will continue. So what I had to do was start coming out and be creative and innovative and create channels to move those waste tires, whether it was going to be to another tire recycling facility that was gonna grind them up, or I was gonna start reselling tires or making, uh, cutting sidewalls out. And we'll get to that down the road. So anyways, moving forward. So what do we got here, man? This is my competitor, so. <laughs> even your competitor is coming right. here. Even, even the competitor comes here, but we have a phenomenal relationship. That's what it's about. I mean, the, the pie is big enough for everybody. And I have a great relationship with these guys. They come, they dump their waste here. We recycle that waste and that's what they need. So everybody, everybody serves their, their purpose and responsibility, so. All right, in this facility, we probably bring in here around uh, 600 tons, 600 tons of waste here every single day. That waste comes here, my guys will go through it and they'll start pulling out all the recyclables, you know. Let's go through the, uh, we'll go through the steps. So today's a Saturday, it's our slowest day. It's more like a catch up day, kind of clear, clear everything off and be ready for a Monday. So behind me, we have uh, this piece of equipment, that's an electric, uh, electric crane with a material handling uh, grapple. The material will, will be dumped right underneath it and that grapple will dump the stuff on top of that picking line. It'll go up that conveyor belt and that conveyor belt will then stretch out about 100 feet. There, there's gonna be people inside that conveyor belt pulling out all the different commodities. Paper, cardboard, plastics, metal, concrete, whatever we can recycle, we're gonna pull it out of there. At the very end of the belt, the waste falls on the ground. The residual waste falls on the ground. We load that onto a trailer. That trailer will haul it to the, to the landfill. Okay. Everything else is, uh, is pulled. You see these dumpsters underneath that uh, the sorting line? Yeah. Those dumpsters, by the time we're done, will be full of cardboard and metal and plastic and lumber and so on and so forth. That stuff will go back to either other recycling facilities or to other facilities that we have that we will then um, take it to a, another step, whether grinding wood or taking the tires to our tire facility. Now, do you guys have uh, an automated process or is it people picking the material? How do It'll you guys actually people, separate yeah. it? As time goes on and technology gets better, uh, there'll probably be robots down the road pulling some of these things out there. But the type of material that we have, which is CND waste, construction demolition waste, yeah. it's hard to handle. So. If you have a robot pulling out a piece of two by four, that one two by four might be three inches long. The other one might be eight feet long. So it's gonna be very hard for it to decipher what very that's gonna be. So enough. that's why really it has to be more manual. Human beings have to be there and pull the stuff out. So okay. typically we have anywhere between eight and 12 people on that picking line wow. and they'll pull out all the different recyclables. Um, one, of the, one of the reasons I love this business is because you never know what's gonna show up, right? It's like, um, it's like that movie, uh, I was gonna say, uh, you know that movie with uh, Tom Hanks, the, uh, it's like a box of chocolates, you never know what's gonna right. expect. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, kinda yeah. like that, you know? You never know what you're gonna expect. And you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure. And in here, I wanna show you over there, uh, behind that tractor that's over there, those are all solar panels. Wow. These are, these solar panels, these solar panel, panels, uh, there's probably a good, 700 solar panels there, and those solar panels have some cracks. Now, to one person, they're just junk. But I've recognized and I realized there's no way that I can be throwing that stuff away. When I started to, to, to look into it and see exactly how a solar panel works, just because there's a crack in the glass does not mean it's not gonna generate electricity, right? So I've learned that you can take one of these solar panels, you can epoxy it, okay. which is gonna seal, seal the, the cracks, and those, uh, the solar, the solar uh, cells that are inside the glass, 
they're still gonna collect the sun rays and create electricity. Now it's not gonna be possibly 100% uh, electricity that's gonna generate, but if it gives you 90%, what's the problem with that? You're throwing it away, man. Yeah, Absolutely. it's like you're salvaging it. So that's, that's the fun part of, of what we do here. There's always gonna be something that you can pick up and you can uh, just get creative with it and, and uh, find another market for it. So follow me. Usually there's just so many other, so many cool things that, that happen around here that we see, you know. Um, I've, I've been able to pull out like antique, antique guns, you know, Holy which is just smokes, nuts, dude. you know. Uh, Have you tried to like, then like sell those antiques or do you keep them right oh, now? Oh, I keep them. <laughs> <laughs> I have a whole collection. That's, that's, a, that's a real big problem that, uh, that we have. We kind of start hoarding a bunch of different things that uh, I bet, man. we shouldn't. But you're like, Dude, this is cool. I want to keep this. Well, it's just it's such amazing things, you know. It's just uh, anywhere from really amazing. The, the other day, uh, we went to a warehouse and uh, started going through it because they wanted us to clean it out. And I, I needed to tell my my my, uh, my staff what needed to stay, what needed to go. And in the area of some of the things that needed to go, there was a, a bunch of boxes. And I started looking into it. I was like, oh, they told us to throw all this stuff away. And it was a bunch of cassettes. But the cassettes were, were all personal growth and motivational conversations. And to me, that was the jewel, man. Wow. Because right there, we need personal growth. We need that motivation. We need that inspiration. And that's what drives me. And actually, uh, you know, I, my, my journey into personal growth is what really, really helped me and catapulted me to where I'm at, to where I'm at today. You know, it was a matter of, of just have, having a reason to, having a reason, having goals, and really looking forward to what's next. Where am I going? And working towards something. So, yeah, to me that was the jewel that we found in regards to those cassette tapes. And uh, later, you'll, you'll, I'll show you those that are they're inside of my office. I, oh, I bought wow. myself a cassette player just so I can listen to them. So, oh really? Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say yeah. they still sell those. Then? <laughs> yeah, they're not. They, they make cassette players now that are Bluetooth, so it's pretty cool. So right here we have our lobby, right? So all the folks that come in here. Now we don't have too many customers that come here because a lot of the stuff that we do, um, whether it's online, folks ordering dumpsters, um, or home builders that we work for doing the construction site cleanup like the uh, the Pulte homes, the KV homes, the DR Fortins, well, they're not gonna come here, right? We actually go to them, and or they already know us, and it's just uh, a bidding process done online, and uh, that's how we get those jobs. But long story short, uh, the folks who do come here, this is where they come in and say hello. Nice, man. How many employees do you guys got right now? <sighs> well, a little bit over eyes. Well, that's an interesting, interesting question. So um, we have about 200 employees that, that are working for Lunas, and then we have another uh, another 250 employees that um, we've converted them from from our existing employee and now to our to our subcontractor okay. that we give them a bunch of jobs by piecework. So okay. it's pretty cool how it's evolved, and we just like to see people grow. Nice, man. Awesome. So this is our uh, reception area, and uh, these folks here basically handle our calls on the every on the every day. Folks calling in for a dumpster. Folks calling in for. Uh, to schedule something for the following day. And these, these uh, our staff, is, they're phenomenal, they work hard and they do a great job. This is. All these are offices and, you know, and yeah, yeah, you yeah. know exactly. you got kitchens, restrooms, and just, uh, so anyways, yeah, just, uh, we have 18 people basically that, uh, that, that are inside the office that have to, they're doing all the things from answering phones to uh, sending out invoices and collecting for us. So like I said, once again, everybody does a phenomenal job and uh, creating that culture where everybody wants to be here and be efficient and do something good. Uh, that's really important. And we've been able to create that. So, okay. Awesome, right. man. Well, I guess let's head out to- I guess let's do it. To the, uh, what is it? The used tire lot? The used tire lot, yes. Do you guys have other facilities other than this? Uh, we do, we have a, uh, well, when you see other facilities, really it's Like just, lots, like I guess, uh, spaces where you guys see their store we do. material or- Yeah, you know, um, this is. Thanks. This facility here is mainly just for more of the. Well, they call this a MRF. MRF stands for Material Recover Facility. So, not necessarily recycling because we're not recycling anything. We're not converting 
a piece of aluminum to a brand new can, we're not actually recycling that, right? So what we're doing is just, we're recovering it from the waste stream. So this is actually called a material recovery facility. Um, our tagline back there says Luna's Recycling. That's just much easier for folks to understand. To understand. So, right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, in regards to facilities, well, we have our, we do have, so we have the, the tire recycling, the tire recycling yard lot. Yeah. Right? Which we're gonna um, go part of that has some of the mechanic, the mechanic shop and maintenance area. Okay. Uh, we have our parking areas, um, our dumpster areas. I mean, we, we utilize approximately 20 acres wow. uh, just to house all the vehicles, um, the folks parking, uh, inventory, a little bit of everything. So it just, it requires a lot of space for all the things that we that we have and we have accumulated in 30, I think 37, 38 years. So I guess we're about to throw this away. So we're about to throw this away. So, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> these are some of the things, man. It's just like, you know, one man's trash, another, another man's treasure. And so uh, I'm sure my brother, my, I have a twin brother and uh, you know, he's, he, uh, He's a musician, and I'm sure he's the one that pulled this out to the side, and he wanted to, you know, test it to see how good it was, and so like, that's nah, probably why nah, it's over here. We're not gonna throw this away. He's not throwing this away. He's taking it home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what advice can you give to someone who wants to start um, recycling tires or oh. wants to start getting in this type of business, the used tire business? That's a that's a great question. Um, a lot of folks will come here and they see like, wow, there's money to be made everywhere, and and. That is 100% true. There's money to be made everywhere. However, you gotta do your due diligence. You have to do your homework. You gotta find out certain things. Like, right here, the biggest expense is gonna be whatever's waste, what is that gonna cost? And don't think that, that just because, uh, oh, you know what? Down the road, uh, there's a cement kiln. They'll take the tires. Don't assume that they'll take them. You gotta speak, because some folks, some cement kilns will not take it. Some landfills will not take it. Some landfills will charge you uh, three times the regular charge because they don't want to deal with tires. Yeah. Tires is a real huge nuisance in landfills. And so they're gonna charge you through the roof sometimes. So you gotta figure out, you gotta do your homework. Don't think that it's gonna be very easy just to charge a guy a dollar or two dollars to pick up a tire and then you can pull out the good stuff and then you have enough money to pay everything. It does, it's not, it doesn't work that way, you know? You got insurance, you got labor, you got a lot of things that gotta get paid. So you gotta do your due diligence. Uh, and I would say the most important thing is whatever's left over, whatever's gonna be your residual waste, whatever's left over, where is that gonna go? How much is it gonna cost you to get rid of it? That, that's trucking. Trucking is a huge piece. This, we're in Las Vegas and our waste, a lot of our waste has to go back to California. That trucking expense is through the roof. Fuel prices are through the roof and we have to calculate when it makes sense and when it doesn't make sense. And we got to start doing something different. Right behind here under that tarp is a piece of equipment that will shred 1,000 tires per hour. 1,000 tires per hour. That machine, that shred, that's a shredder. That shredder, I haven't fired it up because we're just, the market's not ready for, there's not a market for those chips that that, that shredder makes, so it doesn't make sense. That was, a, that was an enormous expense, or I don't look at it as an expense, I look at that as an investment. Because when the timing is right, that's gonna make us, that's, it's gonna pay back 10 times more. Yeah, okay. Oh, well. So I guess, I guess what I would say to that entrepreneur that is excited to get into the tire recycling business is, it's a fun business, it's an easy business, but what will hurt you and get you out of the business real fast is those unexpected expenses, the expenses of trucking it to wherever it's going, whether it could be a landfill or to, to a cement kiln or the whoever might want to even purchase some of the stuff. You got to understand that there's trucking expenses all right. and you always have to calculate that into your numbers. And you have to understand all, all your expenses before you get into this business or any business. So pretty much uh, failing to plan is planning to fail. And you're business. setting yourself up for sabotage. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Norberto, thank you so much for the tour, man. I really appreciate it. It was a beautiful facility, and uh, you guys should definitely check out the podcast that we're going to have. Uh, I'll contact uh, Norberto's contact info, and if you're in Vegas, you know where you should be buying your used tires from, man. Right? That's a must. Anything less would be uncivilized. There you go, man. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.